pray, Lord, help us to be your lights as we call upon you because you are indeed our blood and our righteousness. And Lord, may your word ever live in us as we constantly call upon it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We've been talking about five scriptures you need to know, and today we want to talk about uh, the guidebook, the Bible that he gives to us. And I invite you to watch this little video. Today we look at that fourth of our five scriptures that we need to know. These are scriptures that are going to help us to stand firm in our faith in the midst of the adversity that we face each and every day. They're truths that are going to help us to appreciate the blessings that we have as a result of belonging as a child of God to Jesus. If we go and review, we remember that uh, we began by realizing that we are loved by the one and only God who loves to give gifts as we look at John 3 16 and 17 then we learned how we can trust God with all our hearts and and that he will direct our paths as we focused on Proverbs 3 5 and 6 last week we talked about a God who wants to ask of him in prayer and we are to pray in Jesus name as we focus on John 16 24 but today our focus will be on another wonderful gift we have been given by God at our disposal. The video clip gave us just a few facts concerning the Bible. But the Bible is actually a guidebook directly from God. We have a book that actually claims to be the very word of God. It does not claim to contain the Word of God, as some people try to make it say. No, this claims to be the very Word of God. And the way the biblical text has endured and has been preserved in its accuracy in itself is a testimony to the miracles of this book and the fact that this Bible is God's Word. And today we're going to see why it's important for you and I as followers of Jesus to spend time in this Bible each and every day. So let's turn to our another life verse. It comes from Timothy, 1 Timothy 3, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, and we read it together. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, 
for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The first thing we have to understand about the Bible is that it is inspired by God himself. Books are usually written from the mind of and by the hand of man. But the Bible, it's unique in that it is inspired by God and it's written by the hand of man. And that's what 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for, and then it goes on and tells us what it is. Now that's quite a claim to make, isn't it? And Paul is telling us that all the scriptures are inspired by God. Now when we think of inspiration, though, we may think of seeing something that moves us to the point of maybe painting a picture or uh, Lloyd sees something and it leads her to write a poem or a short story or, you know, something like that. But when Paul says the scriptures are inspired, he's not merely saying that those who pen the scriptures were moved by thought of the existence of a God to write the Bible. He's not saying that at all. The Bible. It's really a library of 66 books and letters written over 1,500 years span of time. It encompasses over 40 generations. It was written by 40 different individuals from every walk of life, from kings to peasants, in different places, during different times, uh, on three different continents, using three different languages. And yet the message is the same. In other words, the Bible is absolutely consistent. It contains no errors or no contradictions, even though the History Channel tries to prove otherwise. We have to remember, Scripture interprets Scripture. And once we understand that, we find our answers to all errors or contradictions. What they do is they take something out of context and then try to find the errors with history. No, Scripture interprets Scripture. So, these facts are amazing, aren't they? How did all this happen? Do you think that using 40 different authors from 40 different backgrounds during a 1500 period of time from three different continents using three different languages could possibly come up with a consistent message? We can't even play telephone and do it with 20 people and come up with a consistent message. The message has already changed. It's a miracle. And there has to be more to the issue of inspiration than simply being moved to do something. And so what does it mean? It means God breathed. The Bible is God breathed. That word translated inspiration in our English understanding this word is only used one time in scripture and it's used here and it means God breathed all scripture then is the product of God's breath or spirit the result of God's action every word of the scriptures was then breathed by God and then written down by men who God used to proclaim his message to the world. You see, God revealed his person and God revealed his plan to certain people and had them write it down. These individuals you still had their way of saying things. Just like you and I, we would use different words, but the, the message stays the same. And so their personality came out and, and their lifestyles came out in how they wrote it. But Peter is clear. He says people did not just make up what to put in the Bible, but rather this is what it says in 2 Peter 1.21. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. It goes back to who we are. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And that same thing happens to us. So when you read the prophecies in the Old Testament and realize they were often written hundreds of years before the event happened, it testifies to the validity of God being in control. Just imagine being able to predict what happened on 
only we're able to predict it a thousand years ahead of time or a hundred years even. Now, I'm not talking about a prediction with, uh, with some ambiguous thoughts. You know, we got those kind of Notre Dame or whatever you call them. Uh, you know, I, I, I have terrible times pronouncing certain things. You know that. You lived with me all these years. But these people make it so ambiguous that you can make anything seem to fit. No, this is with clarity and accuracy. Prophecies concerning our Lord and Savior Jesus, his death, his resurrection, were made 700 years before he was even born, before he ever came to this earth. And they were accurate. And we're going to be reading a lot of them as we get into the Holy Week from the prophet Isaiah. Jeremiah puts it this way. Then the Lord stretched out his hand and he touched my mouth and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. That's what God breathed means. So the, the Bible is not a book that was formed in the mind of man. It came from God himself to the hand of man. In other words, the Bible is God's word, not man's. Now, the second thing we need to understand is that the Bible is the ultimate guidebook.